You're a creature of habit, Barbara. We all are. Unfortunately, not all of your habits are good ones. Hey gang, welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome to the channel if you're new. This channel contains videos that can help heal more than 90% of any health, wellness, and body image challenge. I kid you not. I am sharing all of the info that I know from all of my years of education just to purely help people. And that's the double truth. I get so frustrated because people can't afford the help or don't have access to proper information. So all I want to do is share all of this with you. In which case, could you please subscribe to this channel? Subscribing really is where the support does come from. I really appreciate every subscription. And please share this channel so that other people can get the help that they need or would like as well. So without further ado, today's topic are 10 habits that are keeping you fat or making you fat secretly that you might not even be aware of. Number one, eating off of huge plates. It's been shown via research that eating off of a smaller plate will actually help you eat less and eating off of a large plate will entice you to eat more. So make those plates a little bit smaller. You don't need to use a big giant dinner plate. I have been made fun of countless times at dinners for asking for a smaller plate and I don't care. That's what's going down over here. Number two, food porn. So many royal scandals surrounded the parsnip that it was forced to retire from public life. I know I am guilty of it too. I do follow pages on Instagram like this one but the majority of pages I follow are food porn as well, however healthy food porn that makes healthy choices look more appealing to me, like this one. I have linked both of these Instagram pages down below for you, enjoy. However, do keep your newsfeed full of pictures like this that are colorful, still look absolutely delicious, satisfy your eyeballs as well as your hungry tummy and will entice you to eat more healthily, less fatty foods. These pages are what inspire me to actually cook my healthy meals. Don't think you have to make perfect meals. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Cooking is an adventure. If you make a mistake with something that you cook, you know, there's another one a few hours later. Number three, not portioning out your snacks. I am not about calorie counting. I really dislike measuring food, weighing food, counting calories, but when it comes to snacks like candies, chips, popcorn, ice cream, put these things in bowls. That way you're not going to be sitting there watching TV and mindlessly eating these snacks until all of a sudden I can't believe I ate that whole thing. That is bad news bears when it comes to the waistline. Eating out too much. I understand that in society these days it is a social norm to spend time with people by ingesting things. I don't get it. Meaning let's hang out for a drink. Let's get together for some apps. Let's go for dinner. Let's go for brunch. Let's go for lunch. Let's have a potluck gathering. I am at the end of my rope when it comes to this socially. So I have actually really tailored back what I do with my friends. And if they want to hang out with me when it comes to ingesting, cool. I will do that once or twice a month. Otherwise, I'm going to be suggesting, how about we go for a walk? Why don't we grab a tea and window shop together? Why don't we go for a hike? If it's winter, let's go bowling. Let's go to the movies. Let's do something that doesn't just revolve around ingesting things. The more you eat out, the fatter you will be because these restaurants, because it is cheaper, use lower quality oils, cook in a lot of oils, deep fry the foods, it's not great, and you don't want to be bombarding your body with that all the time. Even a salad can be upwards of 1,200 calories for one salad. Not kidding. Check out these menus. It's absolutely insane. Or cook a healthy lunch and have your friends over for a healthy lunch. Or why don't you designate a healthy snack 
time. I know that my friends know me, they know my values are very, very health based, and so nobody complains. Everyone enjoys it, they have a good time, and more often than not, I hear from them that they've been wanting to do the same thing, and they've been wanting to eat out less for even saving money purposes, and just to be healthier. So take the initiative, be that person. Not enough sleep is number four. Not getting enough sleep will automatically gear your body up to store more fat. People that average four to five hours of sleep per night are 72% more likely to be overweight. That is crazy. There is no need for that. Get enough sleep. And if you're not getting enough sleep, oftentimes the hunger signals that you're getting are actually your body asking for more rest. Similar thing when it comes to hydration. If you're not drinking enough water or hydrating your body properly, your brain is going to be signaling that you need sustenance. You don't. Guaranteed, more than half the time when you're hungry, you're actually tired or you're thirsty. So try those two things first. The best times to nap are at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. because we all have a natural hormonal dip at those times. That is otherwise known as the 3 p.m. brick wall where you don't need caffeine, you need a bit of rest or quiet time. If you're not sleeping enough, the hormone leptin lowers. That is the hormone that says leave food alone, we're satiated, we have enough food, and the hormone ghrelin heightens. That's the hormone that tells us we need to go get food, eat something. It's, it's not a good thing, so try to sleep more. Number six, distracted eating. I have been hugely guilty for this. I am an entrepreneur, I do work from home, so for me, sitting there and just eating was a rare occasion for a while. I either, okay, at the beginning, not gonna lie, I had the TV on, my laptop on my lap, my phone in my hand, the fork in the other, not okay. <laughs> Multitasking is no no bueno when it comes to when you're eating. Driving in the car and eating, that's no good. It's not allowing your mind and your body to come to terms with the fact that you are actually nourishing yourself. So oftentimes, that is why we get to the end of the meal without really noticing. The body still feels hungry. If this does happen to you and you literally can't make time to eat properly, first of all... You're kidding, right? <laughs> figure that one out because you should always be able to make time to eat properly. But if you can't, you need to be waiting at least 20 minutes just to give your body enough time to get that satiation response kicking. Otherwise, you're gonna automatically be less satisfied. Try not to eat distractedly. And that since I have been working from home now for a good amount of months and getting the proper sleep, I am less hungry and when I do eat, I make it a special time for myself to make it visually appealing. I work on the presentation of it, even if it's just for me. I sit down, I create that quiet and that space for me to nourish my body. It also nourishes my mind makes me relaxed, I feel peaceful, I feel satiated, and ready to take on whatever comes after. That is delicious. That's made with passion. Presentation, uh, it looks great. Yeah, I'd give that nine out of 10. We've all heard about how getting groceries while hungry is a bad idea. A new study from Cornell University shows that participants who were hungry when they went shopping chose to buy food that had a higher calorie content. It does tend to make you spend more money, but it's what you're spending money on when you're hungry that's the problem. Even short-term food deprivation can lead to a shift in choices such that people choose less low-calorie and relatively more high-calorie food options. And I'm talking about neurological signaling again. When you're hungry and you're in a grocery store, our bodies are still primally wired. What is the easiest? Since it is all available to us, what's the fastest? What looks the most delicious? Gonna tell you a secret, shouldn't be a secret. It's gonna be things like frozen pizzas, grab and go items, quick things, also that are laden with sugar usually. So please, please do not go grocery shopping hungry. If you do, and always have a list. Go grocery shopping with a list. Because even if you're hungry and you stick to that list and don't listen to the little hunger guy in the brain, get in my belly! You're gonna succeed, come out of that store, go home, grab a quick snack like an apple. I always keep apples in the car. I know, odd. However, I 
have an apple for when I leave the store to drive from the store to my home, throw down an apple, or eat it right when I get home. It's perfect. That way, you're satiated. Consuming liquid calories. Also, nope. Don't consume liquid calories. And these could even be, quote unquote, healthy liquids like juice not so healthy if juice is not drunk within eight minutes of juicing said thing it's going to be interpreted by the body as sugar water turns into the sugar on the gi index very quickly in the body not going to do you any good and all those calories are going to get stored because they're not readily available to be used as an energy source that way also alcohol most refined sugar on the face of the planet there are so many extra calories in alcohol. It's easy to down a couple of glasses of wine at dinner, but remember, that's 400 extra calories, okay? That's no, that's no good. That's a big chunk of your day. So try not to do that. A soda, a Coke, for example, full of sugar. It's got 14 to 17 spoons of sugar in that one can. That is no good. The calories are huge. And then drinking diet soda, not smart either because the artificial sweetener tells your brain that you've had sustenance when you ingest it and then later it catches up with itself and all of a sudden your body's begging for food and it's usually sweet because it runs into this, hang on, I was going to use that sustenance. There were no calories in it. We need something now. So try not to drink sodas. What I do is I like to buy flavored soda water or I buy plain soda water and flavor it with lemon. Citrus is an excellent appetite controller. I was going to say suppressor. I don't want to say it suppresses your appetite, but it does help rein in that appetite. Late night eating. Eating at nighttime, it's not necessarily about when you eat that's true it's more about what you eat however when you eat does matter when it comes to eating at nighttime in north america after 8 p.m your parasympathetic nervous system is supposed to turn on this regulates digestion metabolization restoration all of those things that should be happening. When you eat late at night, your body can't focus on doing what it needs to do and it has to work on digesting. This keeps the sympathetic nervous system heightened, which releases the wake up and stress hormone cortisol. You're gonna get a crappier sleep because of it and you're gonna be a little bit more bloated in the morning. Intermittent fasting is wonderful to counteract this. It gives your body all of the time it needs to work on metabolizing, repairing, sending food to your muscles, getting rid of food you might not need, regulating the energy systems of your body to properly metabolize the food you've eaten and to use it as the energy that it needs to be. If you wanted to experiment with intermittent fasting, that would mean you could start with stopping eating by 7 p.m., all done eating. You should be in bed by 10 for proper circadian rhythm, and then you can start having breakfast again at 7 a.m. So that's usually the easiest way to go about it. If that seems too hard for you, all you need to do is start with not eating three hours before you go to bed. So if I go to bed at 10, I'm done by seven. If I go to bed at 11, I'm done by eight. So give your body three hours to gear down getting ready for sleep and then go to bed. If you do get really hungry at night before you go to bed and you can't go to bed on an empty stomach, have a nice spoonful of natural peanut butter, not Jif, not Skippy, not Kraft, not any of those things that are full of sugar, but a natural peanut butter, a spoonful of that will satiate your body in time for you to fall asleep. And as well, it helps to keep your blood sugar regulated throughout the night. So you're not waking up at random times in the middle of the night and unable to get back to sleep, which is often caused by a blood sugar fluctuation. And number 10, the last tip I have for you, obligatory eating. I made you a sandwich. Oh yeah, I'm not that hungry. You sure you're not hungry? Yeah, grandma, I'm not hungry. That was the best sandwich I've ever had. This can get tied in with when you eat out too much with friends, that social scene. But a lot of times, look, I made this just for you, or I got you all these chocolates, or, you know, we're all going out for apps, so you gotta come and have some apps too, and then you don't wanna be the odd one out eating a salad, because heaven forbid people make fun of you for what you ingest. Oh my gosh, relax, do what you need to do for you, 
If someone makes you something, show how grateful you are. Say thank you, ask for the recipe, take it home with you, freeze some of it, eat it a little bit along the way as you go. Try not to feel obligated to eat. I know I have been chastised for this in the past. I've gone to someone's house their family had cooked something. It wasn't planned. We weren't meant to be eating dinner together. Otherwise, of course. However, all of a sudden I was labeled as rude for not eating. But first of all, I wasn't hungry. Second of all, it wasn't something that I liked to put into my body health wise. I'm not going to sit there and just choke that down and in my mind be unhappy for it so that I wouldn't be labeled as rude. I'd rather be rude and stay true to myself. Try to do the same thing for you. And that's it for today. There are many more habits. If you want to know more habits, comment below and I'd be happy to help you out. Please comment below any questions you might have for any Q&A videos coming up. I get lots of those. I'm still saving the best ones for a future Q&A video. Please subscribe to this channel. Again, I really appreciate subscriptions and there is an amazing fitness enthusiast, healthy, prize pack that I'm giving away when I get to 500 subs. I have a software that will randomly pick one person when I get to 500 and I will be giving that person a wicked prize pack. Please hit that little bell notification button if you would like a notification of each time I post a new video. And please do hit the thumbs up for me down below if you liked this, thought it was entertaining or informative in any way. I would sincerely appreciate that. Until next time, have super amounts of fun in your life and have super amounts of fun changing any of these habits, if you have any of them, into more healthy habits. I've got a whole list of healthy habits that I've incorporated to replace all of these. If you want to know more about that, let me know too. And until next time, see you then. Bye.